Bengals safety Jesse Bates makes a glaring but reasonable admission. Hi again, everyone. I'm James Erpine with AllBengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And the Bengals starting their Week 11 preparation as they take on the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday in Vegas. It's a huge game between two 5-4 and four teams. But the Bengals, as we noted earlier today right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, gain some ground in the AFC North. And, well, they have a shot to make a run here in the final eight games of the season. And if they're going to make a run, Jesse Bates has to be a big part of it. On defense, this defense desperately needs a game changer, someone that's going to force a bunch of turnovers or make a lot of game-changing plays, which coming into the year, I think a lot of people expected Jesse Bates to be that guy. He had that breakout 2020 campaign where he had three picks, 15 passes defense, then he was just all over the field. Well, this year it hasn't been the same and he's been a bit underwhelming and I think that's fair to say now the 24 year old still has 55 tackles he still has an interception he's still better than league average safety so uh, you know it's a high bar for a guy like Bates but for someone who was talking about top safety in the NFL right how many times did the Bengals tweet that out this offseason how many times have we heard including right here on this channel from me, that Bates should be paid like a top safety. Well, contract talks did not go well. And the negotiations about an extension kind of broke off by the the start of the season, which is normal for the Bengals. They don't usually negotiate long-term deals in season. And so, well, that left Jesse Bates in the final year of his rookie deal, essentially a prove-it deal and in a prove-it year for him. And so far... He hasn't shown that he's an all-pro, that he's this game-wrecking safety that deserves $20 million per year, $16 million per year, or whatever. This isn't about his contract. It's actually about what Bates said on Monday afternoon during a Zoom with reporters, including myself. And Bates admitted that he was thinking about the wrong things, that he wasn't necessarily focused on football because of the contract, because of everything that came along with it in the good news. And I think we can take him at his word because this was a very honest couple of answers that we're going to show you in just a second. Bates admitted that he had to go talk to some people that he trusted, Wake Forest coaches, Wake Forest uh, former teammates, and that he's in a much, much better headspace now than he was coming into the season. Here's about two minutes of Jesse Bates discussing the contract, essentially, how it weighed on him, his play during the season so far. And he's played in eight games, missed the, the Jacksonville game due to a neck injury. But here's Jesse Bates on, on what he needs to do in the second half of the season. And looking back at the first half, why he wasn't playing up to his standards. I haven't played as well as I wanted to. Um, I'm just happy that we're in a situation to win ball games. honestly. This is um, the best situations we've been in in my four years here going into a bye weekend so um, it's not more about the personal level obviously like I said that I have to play better for us to win games and I know that I haven't played um, up to that level Um, but I think I can Uh, and like I said I I feel like my mind was honestly it was was on other things uh, throughout the first part of the season Um, and for me to be able to accept that and talk to you know, former coaches at Wake Forest and former players um, and talk to other guys, my former teammates about their situation and um, really put it in perspective. Like, hey, bro, like nobody's feeling sorry for you, man. Like you got to go out there and perform uh, whether, you know, things have gone your way the first half of the season or not. So, um, like I said, I keep, I keep repeating it. I can't be thankful enough for this bye weekend because it's, it's really helped me mentally um, going into the second part of the season and I hope my teammates can see it as well. Uh, like I said, I, I feel like I'm at a better headspace now than I was at the beginning of the season. Um, so called on to, you know, proving people, uh, you know, proving the wrong people right. Uh, and the main thing I should do is be focusing on proving the right people right. Um, as far as my coaches, my teammates, my family, um, and not worry about all the other stuff. I know that's going to work out. Um, I know what type of player I am. Um, that, that stuff's going to work out regardless. Um, but like I said, I got to be better for this team. So I'm excited for it. But I've had multiple talks, and it's not just about football. It's about life. 
um, how my former teammates were doing at Wake Forest, um, some things that they faced throughout life. Um, like I said, helped me really put into perspective that, hey, bro, like live in the now, live in the moment, um, cherish it, you know, take care of what you got in front of you now and the future will take care of it. So I think Bates deserves praise for being honest and open. And I'm never going to uh, rip a player for doing that, especially with reporters, because we get so many uh, of those answers that are, you know, just uh, average coach speak or average player speak answers. And he's being real with us. And I appreciate the honesty, but he has such an opportunity. And, and I think if, if he, if I was one of his Wake Forest teammates or coaches or someone that he went to for advice during the bye week, I would tell him, look, Jesse, you're 24 years old. If you have a big season, it, it, this is a, an opportunity for you to show that you're one of these game-changing, game-wrecking type players. Especially now, the Bengals are 5-4. and four. They're in third place in the AFC North. They're going to be playing all of these different AFC contenders in the second half of the season. He's going to face Derek Carr this weekend. A lot of people watch the Vegas Raiders. He's going to face Ben Roethlisberger next weekend. They're going to face the, the Chargers a few weeks from now and Justin Herbert. This is a chance for him to show everybody. The Bengals, his agent, his family, prove to himself, everybody at Wake Forest, everybody at Cincinnati Bengals Talk, all of the 8,000 plus that subscribe on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, that he's an elite safety. And I would say that to him because if you look at it like that as an opportunity versus this pressure packed, I hope I don't get hurt because I haven't signed this new deal. Well, then it's, it gets interesting because I think he can make a lot of money in the second half of the year. And he's certainly someone the Bengals want to keep around. I don't think anyone thinks otherwise, but they were trying to keep him at the rate that they wanted to keep him at. And right now, I think those people at Paul Brown Stadium would say, see, we wanted him to prove it for another year before he gave him top dollar. He hasn't done that yet. Well, he has a chance now, an opportunity now, the final eight games of the year, the team trying to make the playoffs for the first time since 2015. This is the closest he's gotten, which he said. And as you heard there, he knows he needs to play better. So uh, if he does, I think this defense can look much closer to, to the unit we saw in the first seven weeks compared to the unit we saw the past couple of weeks in ugly, ugly losses to the Jets and the Browns. Either way, like I always say, we will have you covered right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. So hit that subscribe button because you're going to see video like that that no one else is putting out there. And you're going to get reaction instantly. We didn't know uh, that we were going to be doing a Jesse Bates video today, but appreciate his honesty. Uh, and I, I think that, again, viewing it as an opportunity for him over the next eight weeks is how we should go about it. And if he does that then we could see the Jesse Bates of old, the guy that, well, has had bigger second halves than first halves throughout his career. The final eight games, I asked him about that, by the way. And he's like, look, I don't know why I play better in the second half of the year, but that's certainly something statistically, if you pay attention. Even last year, his breakout season, he was better in the second half than the first half. We're going to have you covered every step of the way right here. So subscribe, ring the bell. And until next time, for our editor, Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Erpine. Thank you so much for watching right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.